Hey guys, welcome back for another episode of The Suited Shootist. And this week, I want to do, honestly, a much overdue update on the Filster Enigma. I've been carrying it since early November at this point. And um, when I am carrying a firearm, it has become pretty much since then my go-to method because of the flexibility of it. And so I'm just going to kind of jump into kind of how it's served me so far. And if you have any questions on it, what might still you know be worth you taking some time and, and checking it out. Before I do, uh, obligatory. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. If you haven't joined the Facebook page yet, please do. Uh, if you haven't signed up for Patreon yet, I would be deeply appreciative if you took a look at that as well. Um, I've also still got stickers available, so if you want some of them, description on how to get a hold of them is going to be down below also. So let's go ahead and jump into it. For those of you unfamiliar, the Enigma was a kind of carry chassis that Filster debuted back in November of last year. And the idea was that, unlike traditional holsters that you would have to mount to your belt line, this system is completely independent of what you're wearing. And honestly, the only real way to get a look at it is to get a look at it. So uh, yeah, I'm going to be taking clothes off for you this episode. Um, as you can see, nothing is attached to my belt or to my pants. Everything is worn underneath the clothing. Now, sometimes I do wear an undershirt like this. Um, honestly, for th these purposes, it's just to kind of give as much contrast as possible so that the, uh, the camera will pick everything up. So if you've seen my initial video that I'll go ahead and link, um, I used to run the gun a little bit higher to where the back plate was kind of up almost under my ribs. What I've ended up doing now, my belly button's here, I've kind of taken John's advice and um, the, the back plate is now kind of even with my navel, but you'll notice I've got the, the belt itself kind of hitched up and the belt as it goes around my waist and around back is basically also at the level of my belly button. And um, the main reason for it, honestly, is complete and total vanity. Because I'm still a little squishy around the midsection, having the cinch point above the waistline of my pants helps to kind of move any muffin top from right at the waistline to a little bit higher. So that way, when my clothing drapes, it doesn't billow out. It just kind of flares out. Um, it creates a slightly more flattering silhouette. So that is not really a, uh, a functional consideration. But aside from that, this thing has been immensely comfortable. I have worn this on several six and eight hour drives through several Gulf Coast states. And um, I, I really have found that the flexibility of it has justified it becoming my regular carry solution. I'm not gonna call it my everyday carry solution because if you saw last week's video where I did the questions answered, because of my day job, I don't necessarily carry a firearm every single day. Shocking, I know, gasps and pearl clutching. Um, I'll, I'll wait for all that to subside. Okay, so we're back. Uh, yes, I don't carry a gun all the time, but when I do, it's typically the, the Filster Enigma. And what I really do appreciate about it is that beforehand, when I was just running a holster with Dark Star clips, and you can kind of get an idea of how I ran that with this video when I did my uh, kind of essentials guide for tuckable holsters. The, the holster with the DCC clips was like a, I would say an 80 to maybe 85% solution in terms of exactly how discreet I could get a Glock 19 without any compromise by my standards. 
With the Enigma, honestly, that has bumped it up to about a 95% solution, even in very well tailored clothing and, um, and you know, especially tucked in. This is a phenomenally low profile option for people because even with the discrete carry clips, you kind of had to make a compromise because either A, you had to opt for a gun that was light enough that you could use the behind the belt clips, at which point the waistband of your pants was really the only thing that was supporting the weight of the gun. And really for that, you needed something a little bit smaller, like Smith & Wesson Shield size and weight for it to be really appropriate without too much sagging. Or if you're gonna run something like a 19, you still needed to have the, uh, the DCC clips that would go over the belt. And the problem is, especially if you're running, you know, a tan belt like this, those black clips are going to stick out. They're, they're, they're going to be an overt signature that you're carrying a firearm. Whereas with this, it's, it, it, it disappears. Um, and I've worked that even under some incredibly light cover garments. I'm talking very open weave cotton and linen, that kind of stuff, where um, with a traditional holster it may not have been as forgiving. So those are really kind of the only, the only tweak that I made was running the body of the, the holster in itself a little bit lower. And I am running the, uh, the Papoose, uh, John Tucker's design. I'll, I'll link to that down below as well. What I found is, you know, again, just because I am still kind of rocking that successful lifestyle body, whenever I cinch the belt down enough to really give me the concealment that I want, the fact that the nylon belt itself was just as thin as it was, it wasn't cutting into me per se, but it was uh, it was sufficiently uncomfortable that I was looking for a solution. They also just debuted the sports belt as well. I may pick one up. I don't know. Honestly, all of this has been working for me just fine. I'm still running the factory leg leash as well. I haven't had any issues with that. Um, I will post a photo of where I run the leg leash uh, to give you an idea. The leg leash is right here. So basically, you know, once the curve of the ass stops, it's here and it runs high along the leg and kind of right into the uh, inguinal crease. So that's the update. I haven't really had to tweak much of anything aside from putting the, the papoose cover on it. And it is a wonderfully flexible option. Even if I don't have to tuck anything in, if I'm just tooling around town in you know joggers and a, and a Henley or, or a hoodie, it's great. The only drawbacks are, and they're minimal. If I'm, if I have not put the gun on first thing, you know, first thing in the morning, then you have to undress a little bit to put it on, as opposed to being able to just slip something in your waistband. It's a nominal inconvenience, so it's not really that big of a deal. The only other consideration, and this is going to be more or less of a drawback for different people, is if you find yourself in situations where you periodically or routinely have to de-gun, then this might not be the option for you necessarily, um, simply because it's a little bit more complicated. You have to at least somewhat undress in order to put it on. So if you're the type of person that can't carry at your workplace, but you still want to have a gun on you in transit, this may not be the optimum solution for that type of scenario. Or if, like myself, your job routinely takes you to denied areas where you are either by policy or law forbidden or prohibited from carrying a firearm, then logistically that kind of complicates things a little bit because you don't want to be taking the gun in and out of the holster because that introduces some unnecessary administrative handling and that's just more opportunities for a negative outcome that don't need to be there. So if you have to periodically or regularly physically remove the gun, then this may not necessarily be the best choice, but depending on how much of your life that applies to, I still think this is absolutely worth a uh, worth a look. So if you have any questions on the Filster Enigma, please, by all means, put them down in the comments. I would love to hear what you have to say. Um, for frame of reference, this has gone with me 
to the Range Master Tactical Conference where I shot the match with it, as well as Mike Green's covert carry uh, class with the Green Ops covert class, which uh, I've done an AAR of as well. So you can kind of check all that out and get a feel for it. I think it's a great option. Like I said, this has really become my my, my go-to for virtually everything. So um, yeah, if like I said, whatever questions you got, let me know down below. And aside from that, I hope everybody has a great week and stay dangerous and stay sharp. <laughs>